Power by Ecotech. Hey everyone, this is Tommy from Worldwide Corals and welcome to episode six of my Ello Stream Reef Build. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about gluing down the corals, adding more corals and fish that you see here. We're also gonna talk about how I programmed the GNC lights to get them all set up and hooking up the GHL doser and what I'm actually dosing in the tank. So let's get right to it. In the previous episode, I had added some fish and also added some corals, but most of the corals were on the sand bed because I wanted to figure out where I was gonna put them. Also, I finally broke down my other tank, which was a total water volume, about 45 gallons. It was a cube and it was jam packed with a bunch of corals that I had for the past couple years. And I didn't really think I had that many corals in there until I started putting them into this tank. So to glue everything down, you cut the end of the frag plug, you add super glue, a ball of putty, and then a little bit more super glue, and you put that in the tank. Now, pro tip that Victor has showed us is when you're mixing your epoxy, let it sit for a while. Don't let it dry completely, but you want it to get a little bit firm because in the beginning, it's not as firm. And once you place the coral in there, if the coral has a good weight to it, or if you're putting an angle on it, it will start to tip and fall and it's not gonna stay. But if you let it get a little bit more firm, then you could work with it better. And when you put the coral there, it stays put. A lot of the corals that I had in my other tank were fast growers, so I had a lot more of it than I thought. So for example, the Forest Fire Digitata, once you get that dialed in, it's a really fast grower. The green slimer really takes off and another coral that likes to grow fast is the setosa. So obviously these are gonna outgrow the new corals that I'm putting in there because as the coral gets bigger, it's growing from each end of the branches and those are growing and multiplying. So I have to be careful on that. I'm gonna probably have to do a lot of fragging. Also, I brought over the fish from my 45 gallon when I broke it down. So I added the clown pair that these guys actually came from the Worldwide Corals 900 gallon tank. So you might remember those fish if you've seen the 900 gallon before. Uh, they're super happy in a Gigantia carpet anemone. Some of the other fish that came into the tank are a Solarensis wrasse. He's a lot of fun, super active, always going around the tank, always out, eating a lot. I also have a Midas Blenny. That one's really fun. Hides in the rocks but comes out when it's ready to feed. Also have a cryptic six line wrasse and those are super cool. But of course, because they're called a cryptic wrasse, you don't see him that often. But when it's feeding time, he usually comes out He's a little bit shy, but that's a really cool fish to add to an aquarium. So you probably noticed something's missing and that's the Tang Gang. They're at Worldwide Corals. I picked them all out. They're in quarantine. I didn't want to rush it. I didn't want to bring them over too soon. I wanted to see how these fish did, make sure everyone acclimated well and, and are doing well and the water parameters are good before I add the tanks. So in the next episode, I'm going to show you the Tang Gang that we're going to add to this. So it's all about patience. Just take it slowly. I kind of overdid it in my head that I wanted to add them, but I, I really know that I should wait a little bit longer. And so that's what we're going to do. I wanted to share with you guys how I set up the lighting schedule for these GNC Blu-ray Pros. At Worldwide Corals, at the stores and in the farm, we like to use more of a blue-like spectrum. It really makes the corals pop and that's one of my favorite looks. We also like to use about a four hour white spectrum and that really helps with coral growth and overall health and kind of simulates what you would see on the reef. To set up the GNC lights, it's really simple. You just start with how you want the tank to turn on and begin and then any changes you make to that, you just go to the next set. So for set two is where I add more of the whites and reds in UV. Set three turns on, fades into blue, and then the lights turn off. Overall, I have about an 11 hour photo period on this tank. I may increase or decrease it depending on what the corals tell me. Another thing that really impressed me about these lights is the low power consumption. At max, it only uses 130 watts, which is really low for a light of this size and how much power output. Also, it runs super cool. So you could leave your hand on the heat sink, and I mean, it's basically like room temperature. So really impressed with that. Another piece of equipment that I was really excited to get dialed in is the GHL doser. It has four dosing pumps. So on this setup, the first one I have set for calcium. The next one is alkalinity. Third is magnesium. And the fourth pump I'm not using yet, but I think I'm gonna dose uh, amino acids in the future. So I'll set that up later on. The GHL doser is really easy to install if you follow the directions. I know it can handle this size tank, which is a 200 gallon, even a larger tank, or even up to a nano tank. So it's really versatile. You could use a doser on a lot of systems. To dial in your doser, you're gonna to need to know the requirements of your tank. If it's a new tank, you might not know how much calcium, alkalinity, magnesium that it takes. So if you're using two part, you could start with the instructions on the back. 
dose, do some testing, see where it's at. Do you need to add more two-part, more magnesium, or less? Once you get to the part where you know how much you need, you can really dial in and set the doser at that level. You can start testing less, but you're still going to want to keep testing to see where the levels are at. As your corals grow, especially Acropora, clams, something that takes in uh, like large LPS that take in a lot of calcium, you're going to notice that depleting even more in the tank or as you're adding more corals. And the key to manage that is just to make testing a part of your requirement and maintenance for taking care of your tank. So on the next episode, I'm gonna bring the Tang Gang home. I promise, I told you guys I would do it last episode, but we'll do it for the next one. We'll get them all acclimated. And I'm gonna put in more corals because I need more corals. There's a lot of spaces and gaps and areas for uh, Acropora on the top and SPS. And I only have two types of zoas in here and I love zoanthids. I have my favorite, the WWC Chaos and the WWC Illuminati, but I need a lot more and all sorts of other LPS. So I saved some room for it. I can't wait to put them in. I hope you guys enjoyed this update. If you did, please subscribe and hit that like button and we'll see you on the next episode.